Hello one more final time. This is Andrew Klein in video 16 of my 16 compar uh, 16 part compositing video series looking at how to uh, generate images in Maya with Mental Ray, uh, rendering them out and bringing them into uh, After Effects or Photoshop for compositing. Uh, in this final video series we've pretty much already got everything put together. I just want to cover how to get elements out of After Effects uh, so that you can have your final render. Uh, two things that you need to do based on two potentially different services circumstances. Uh, number one, let's say you're trying to get just a single render out. You only have one frame that you want to utilize uh, and uh, maybe it's just a beauty render or something for a portfolio, uh, something for uh, print, or just something for your website. Uh, what I can do is uh, in my composition I can go to composition and uh, choose save frame as file. Uh, this is simple enough. Uh, my output file I can name. Uh, I'll choose this creative fawasfafadafa.psd, which is just me jamming on my keyboard there. I choose where to save it to. Uh, I can choose my file format, but PSD is pretty much all it gives me. Uh, my output mode is Photoshop. Uh, and here I can kind of choose my format for all of this, but don't really touch any of these settings. Uh, I would just say OK, and I'd hit Render. It's going to take a minute or two here. I'll see what it does. And uh, when it's done rendering, you'll hear a little uh, chime noise inside of uh, After Effects, which you won't hear in the screen recording here. Uh, I think it actually just finished. Uh, I heard it uh, record and finish. Uh, here is my image. There it is. There's the final image. I've got this all rendered out. Uh, it's as simple as that. And I've got this uh, set up and ready to go. So that's uh, the simple way to export out a single image. Uh, of your final composite. Now if you have a full image sequence this is a little bit more complicated but uh, we'll walk through this here at the end. Uh, the one last thing that we've got to do. Uh, if you've got a full image sequence you just want to make sure in your correct composition and then go to composition and choose add to render queue. And that'll take you to your render queue window yet again. Now this time uh, you probably want to export this out as a movie so you have your whole image sequence. Uh, here I'll choose output to uh, and I can choose my file name. Uh, let's call this, since in the film that I'm working on this was shot7, uh, I'll just call this shot7 final render dot mov and uh, that will now choose the destination to save this out as. Uh, my output mode is currently lossless, uh, but uh, I want to actually go in and change this. There's two potential settings that uh, I would recommend using. Uh, so for uh, utilizing final productions, for working on a uh, full animation, maybe it's a team production or something, or a large piece of your own, uh, I recommend going into video output and going into format options. Uh, it currently is a video codec of animation and uh, I would not prefer to use the animation codec. Uh, I like to make sure I'm not compressing anything until the very end. So I actually set my video compression to none and this is going to make a huge video file but uh, that's what I'm going to do here. Set my video compression to none and say OK. Uh, I'm not going to resize anything. Uh, I'd go to color management and I always check preserve RGB that keeps the same color settings you have here so what you see is what you get and I would say OK and I would hit render and that's gonna render out my large image however if I want to save out an image for the web uh, or a video for the web uh, or a slightly smaller file that you can preview with uh, what I'm gonna do is go into that output mode and uh, under format options I like to choose one of three different compression settings uh, I either choose H.264, which is a pretty good low-res uh, setting. It makes really small video sizes. Uh, problem is it tends to wash out your color and give you somewhat pixelated results, but it does give you really small file sizes. Uh, sometimes I might choose MPEG-4 video, which also tends to wash out your color a bit, but it doesn't do the same sort of like pixelation and uh, compression artifacting that H.264 seems to. Uh, however, MPEG-4 is slightly bigger. Uh, in file size. Uh, if you run a really good like what you see is what you get but somewhat compressed version 
Uh, I sometimes will choose Sorensen Video 3. Uh, that seems to get me a pretty good video compression. Again, it's a slightly larger size than the other two, but uh, it's your choice as to what you need. And you can experiment around with these different ones, uh, Sorensen 3, MPEG-4, and H.264 uh, to your liking. Of course, there's a million more compression settings here, but those are the three that I've always kind of traditionally used. So uh, let's say I'll just set this to Sorensen 3 and say OK. And here I could also resize this. So uh, right now it's uh, rendering at 1920 by 1080, but I could actually resize this uh, to uh, maybe like 50% or so. Uh, 900 by 506, it's just under uh, 50%. Uh, it's a size that I sometimes do my test renders at for uh, Blu-ray. And I would say OK, and I would render this. Now, when it's done rendering, what I'll actually have is, uh, you know, two videos. Uh, I might have my full uncompressed video file. Here, this is uh, gigantic. It can render out a Blu-ray. You see, my computer's even stopped playing it because it's chugging along so much, and it can't keep up with the frame rate. Uh, so I've got this video file, uh, and then I've got my small video file, which is a lot smaller, uh, compressed. You see my computer can play it natively, uh, although when I zoom in, things are a little bit blurrier because my resolution is lower. Uh, difference in file size, though, here. Here's my full um, uncompressed uh, shot. It's 21 seconds long. This full shot at HD is 3.2 gigs. Uh, however, my small shot, the one that I compressed down, is only 89.5 megs. So that's a, you know, many, many times increase uh, try to get, trying to get out that full shot. So it all depends on what you need and what your final output is. Uh, that is now hopefully taking you guys all the way through the process of breaking up parts of a render and compositing those parts back together. Uh, I hope we've covered enough of these sort of ups and downs to help you figure out how to do composites on your own. Uh, for more videos, I always recommend going to my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash slurp the gillman, or going to my website, uh, kleinmakelearngood.com, uh, where you can find lots of video and written tutorials. So once again, this has been uh, Andrew Klein. Uh, it's a video tutorial series from kleinmakelearngood.com. Uh, I am an Autodesk certified instructor and a ZBrush certified instructor, uh, currently teaching at the Art Institute of California in San Francisco. Uh, hope you enjoyed this tutorial series. Uh, hope to see you again.